Today's video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X, your Mac as good as new. Hey, it's Chris. Anybody else excited about MacBook Pros right now? <laughs> Apple just surprise dropped a 16 inch MacBook Pro, which there have been rumors about for a while. Am I getting one? Yes, this is the MacBook Pro that I've been waiting for. This is the upgrade for me. Are you getting one? Well, I'm gonna help you decide if you haven't already pulled the trigger in this video. I'm gonna try to give some stuff, some information that you haven't necessarily heard about before. So we'll see if I succeed. There is gonna be a Q&A session at the end where I answer some of your questions. There's timestamps down in the description if you wanna skip around. And if you find this video useful, I won't complain if you wanna buy me a coffee to say thanks using the link down in the description. The first thing that you need to know is not necessarily a feature, but it's the fact that Apple listened to its pro users. I'm serious. Like, is this thing on, you guys hear me? Apple listened to its pro users. Users. So they took the time to understand that certain physical keys are important to certain professionals, like developers, for instance. We'll get into the keys in a minute. Or they took the time to really understand people's processes and workflows to understand like what little tweaks or big tweaks could they make that would make things more efficient. They listened. And an Apple that is listening to its pro consumers is an Apple that we can all get excited about. Now, I feel like I have to talk about the keyboard first. It's sort of the elephant in the room. So I'm gonna talk about that, and then we're gonna get into some of the stuff that I find more surprising about this announcement, and then just talk about all the regular features too. So, we finally have a new keyboard. It's clickier than the last version, and it shouldn't be making headlines now for needing to be repaired so often. So the keys are raised up significantly more than the last generation keyboard, which means there's gonna be more key travel. A lot of people are really gonna like that and appreciate it. And they made the keys so that wherever you press down on them, the whole key goes down and not just like a part of it. So it's very uniform and flat when you press it down. It's just a nice touch. You wouldn't think this is such a big deal, but it actually is a big deal. We now have that physical escape key. Why does that matter? Here's why it matters because Sometimes you might be in an application on the older 15 inch model of the Pro and you need to hit escape to jump out of something or to reset something. But if it was buried in the touch bar, sometimes you had to go back like three menu screens in the touch bar to find that escape key. Now it's always there whenever you need it. We also have some new old arrow key designs, <laughs> which is a funny way to put it. Um, but back in the day, Apple had a inverse T so like an upside down T arrow key design. And then on the latest, on the previous generation, they kind of redesigned it so it was all really uniform and didn't look weird, no extra gaps in between the keys. Um, but that didn't actually end up working real well for people. So the inverse T is back. And the reason that people like that is because now you can feel around with your fingers and find where those arrow keys are and understand which one you're pressing without having to look down. And previously I've heard of people like, putting gaff tape or something, uh, Daring Fireball, John Gruber from Daring Fireball would put gaff tape on there just so he could find the arrow keys on the previous generation. Now you don't have to do anything like that. It's really easy to find your arrow keys again. So it's a good upgrade or sort of like downgrade upgrade, I don't know. Here's something that's super interesting though. This new keyboard is not covered under Apple's keyboard replacement program that the last uh, generation ended up being covered under. What is that saying to you? It's saying that Apple is very confident in this keyboard design that it's not going to have problems and not going to need to get replaced at all like the last generation. So I take that as a good sign. There's a lot of confidence from Apple here in this keyboard. Okay, so there's a new keyboard. We talked about it. It was boring. It was important, necessary, but boring. Now let's get to some of the stuff that I found more surprising. I'm gonna go in order of like most surprising to least surprising or just kind of ordinary expected stuff. This might be kind of shocking to you, but there's a real decent possibility that this new 16 inch MacBook Pro gets an internal spec upgrade within the next six to nine months. So if you buy it right now, it may not even be a full year before it's no longer the latest, greatest MacBook Pro. The reason is because it's got some internal components and bits from Intel that are already like six months old. Now they're still the top of the line thing from Intel right now, but in a while they're gonna be outdated. Also, it's got Wi-Fi 5 instead of Wi-Fi 6 like you find on the new iPhones. So there's just a few things, I'm not talking about like design wise or anything, this, this is the design now for a while, 
but I'm just talking about internal stuff that probably will see, I'd be really surprised if it didn't get an upgrade fairly soon. Here's something that surprised everybody. The new 16 inch MacBook Pro has massively upgraded speakers. Yeah, like this was not rumored or anything, just popped out and there it was. Like, so people are saying like, not just better speakers, not just great speakers, like massive improvement. It's like uh, going from HD resolution to 4K resolution, but instead of for your eyes, it's for your ears. It's that good. It's like on par with a really great portable Bluetooth speaker. That's how good people are saying that this sounds. And it sounds like a pretty smart speaker setup too. So it's got a six speaker array and it's got two woofers that somehow work together to cancel out the vibrations of the other so that even when it's cranked up, it's not necessarily gonna be rattling your keys on your keyboard and stuff and any internal components. So it's really a smooth thing. Something else that's kind of surprising, but that's cool, but that's also very subtle, is the placement of the touch bar. So right now, it's sitting up a little higher from the top keys on the keyboard to help prevent accidental touches or key presses, digital key presses. So I can't tell you how many times I accidentally activated like Siri or something on the current generation or the last generation of the MacBook Pro because the touch bar's proximity was so close to that top row of keys. Hopefully, this really goes a long way to improving that. And just so you know, one thing we didn't get with the touch bar is any sort of haptic feedback. So haptics, obviously, like when you touch the screen and it sort of vibrates, lets you know that you did something. We don't have that on the touch bar. That was something that people kind of speculated. Maybe we'll see it. Um, well, we don't have it. And I do think that would really help it um, feel more organic, like an actual key press, but whatever. I wanna talk about the storage capacity because you can go all the way up to eight terabytes of internal really fast storage. Now, why would that matter? You could be sitting there being like, who even needs that? Well, here's the thing. Uh, for pro people, for professional people, this now means that having an external drive that you have to lug around with you everywhere you go, that may be a thing of the past. So for me, like when I'm doing a video project, for a long time I used a two terabyte scratch disc, like external drive. And I can fit like two to four projects in there very comfortably uh, without having to delete anything to free up space. And that was two terabytes. So to be able to increase that to eight terabytes, I'm not even shooting like some of the other dudes on like red cameras and stuff. Just to be able to have that option to not lug around an external drive is amazing because it sort of blows up that iconic picture that you get in your head of some YouTubers like lugging around their orange Lacie drives like I've done for a long time too. It's like really freeing to not have to do that. And it's like less clutter even that you have in your workspace, whether you're mobile and you're at the coffee shop or the airport or at your actual permanent desk space. I think for me personally, I think the sweet spot is gonna be about four terabytes. So about one terabyte is gonna be eaten up by internal stuff and I'll have three terabytes, which is better than two that I had been using uh, to mess around with my video projects uh, and it'll be great, declutter stuff. And I will say, Apple storage tends to be really expensive. So you can save, if you drop down from eight to four terabytes, about $1,000. And that's a pretty nice price savings right there. But you could actually drop down to like two terabytes to save even more money. That'd be totally workable. And then it's just great that we have the option to go up to eight terabytes. But then if you still want to use a mobile drive, because you can find storage cheaper than what Apple will offer it to you, um, then you still have that option. This is just a win-win for everybody. So get this, the new MacBook Pro has this new mic array, which supposedly Apple says is should be on par with like a USB podcasting mic. Now that's a big claim and I can't wait to actually test that out. But I will tell you this, from the samples that I have heard of this, that people have recorded, it sounds really good. Now, is it good enough that I would actually replace a podcasting mic with it? I would say probably not, but is it good enough that you could use it like if you forgot your your podcast mic or if you are like traveling and you just wanna go a little bit lighter, you know, for that one one day trip or something? Yeah, it's. I think it's gonna be totally usable for that. I'm excited to test it out. It's better than the last generation for sure. It's better than the mic on the iPhone for sure, this three mic array. And think about this, it's not just for podcasting. They're saying podcasting because this is supposed to be a professional uh, computer, so you know that's how a professional might use it. But even if you're just doing like FaceTime for family or for meetings, I mean, how often do I use that to talk to somebody? Uh, it's important, like sound is uh, an important quality of that conversation. And to have that be upgraded 
that's just great. All right, so those were the few things that I think were really actually pretty surprising to me at least. So now we can talk about some of the important but maybe more expected uh, upgrades. Oh. So let's talk about the screen size because this is a 16 inch screen display. That's an upgrade from the 15 inch display, which they're no longer making. So the 16 is replacing that 15 inch, just so you know. But uh, that obviously means more real estate on the actual screen for you to use. And that's good. Things can be a little bit bigger, spaced out. I like that for sure. But what really impresses me about this is that they're able to do that. But also because of the bigger footprint of this thing, they're able to give you more battery life, which we'll talk about in a second, and uh, just boost the power and stuff without making it actually feel that much bigger or thicker. It's a little thicker. It's a little heavier, but it's not that bad. So if they had put all of this stuff, the extra battery and stuff in the 15 inch model, then it would have been probably much more noticeable in terms of the thickness. But because they were able to spread all that stuff out in the 16 inch model, it actually ends up working out really great. And yes, we are not bezel-less. Uh, sometimes the rumor mill, it doesn't do any service to anybody because you see all these renders and everything looks so beautiful, um, but it's like pie in the sky kind of a thing. It's somebody's imagination, but it doesn't mesh up with like what's actually possible at a certain price point. And so I saw all those rumors too with that really tiny, almost non-existent bezel, and that's not reality. So, so the cooling is massively improved here. I'm hearing feedback from people that have tried it and they're saying, yes, it actually runs a lot cooler. And that's great because we used to see videos of people putting it in the freezer or whatever to cool it down from the last time. So the heat sink is supposedly about 30% uh, better and the fans blow like 30% ish more air on a related note, which is also cool. This thing runs a lot quieter. Even when those fans start running, it's quiet and that's good. That's always a good thing. You know, if you've never experienced like a gaming PC and heard what it really sounds like, even a laptop when those fans ramp up and if you've never experienced how hot the thermals can get on like a gaming PC, in fact, I wish everyone could experience that just so they could come back and marvel at how powerful the MacBook Pro is and yet how cool and quiet it actually is. It's a thing of beauty if you could compare those two things, which actually doesn't matter a whole lot to me because almost always when I'm at my desk, I have either some headphones on or the new AirPods Pro, some sort of noise canceling and noise isolation, so it wouldn't really affect me that much anyways. But still, so let's talk about the battery. There's actually an extra hour of battery life baked into this thing versus the previous model from what I understand. And Apple packed in here a 100 watt hour battery. Like you might've heard, that just so happens to be the limit that the FAA will let you have as a normal consumer on an airplane. So Apple actually took it to the limit in terms of what the battery capacity could be. Now, from what I'm hearing, you can charge this thing up and go out and get eight full hours of use running pro applications. That is very cool. I just wish I could run it uh, with the brightness cranked all the way up because I hate it when the screen dims. Like, I don't care what the computer is. I like a nice bright screen, always running it at full brightness. But still, that's very, very usable. If you think about it, if you're doing pro stuff and you are out in the field, an extra hour, it may not seem like a lot, but when it comes down to it, that's a lot of extra time. That's enough time to like, finish your export and get something out there and upload uh, or whatever. I mean, it matters. One thing that I'm not so psyched about is that we have the same port set up as we had previously in the last gen, and that would be four Thunderbolt 3 USB-Cs with the headphone jack. Uh, no external uh, memory slots or anything like that. I don't think those are ever coming back but I would have done with six. I would have loved to have had six. It's okay, this configuration, um, but I really hate using like a hub if I can avoid it. And I always have those ports completely filled up with my workflow and what I'm doing. So man, I wish even one more would be a big deal for me. Um, but it, you know, just to keep things the same, it'd be nice to have three on each side. You know what I'm saying? And if you're super, super into audio or you need it for your job, the headphone jack is there and you can use it. I'm not really gonna say anything about it because I do prefer wireless and I don't need like audiophile quality stuff. Now, are there any cons when it comes to the new MacBook Pro? It seems like Apple did a really good job of listening to people and coming in and fixing some stuff, giving us a few surprises. So it should more or less take care of a lot of the complaints that people have been voicing and give us a few new features like a bigger screen, uh, more power, those better speakers, whatever. Is there anything wrong with it or that's bad? Well, uh, all of the extra 
power in terms of like battery life and stuff, there's a cost for everything. And the main cost here is just that this thing is, I've heard, noticeably heavier. So I don't really care. And I don't think most pros are gonna care because you would rather have the trade-off of having it be a little thicker, a bit heavier, but still portable that you can take it with. This thing's a beast. Just the fact that you can take it with you and go do some really serious work, that's amazing. That's a trade-off I'm happy to make. So it is a little bit heavier. Some people may not like that, stashing that in their backpack and having to carry it for a long ways or something. But there's that. And then there's also the fact that it's kind of the same old design. And we have a lot of really exciting laptops hitting the market that are non-Apple laptops um, that are sort of pushing the boundaries, it would seem, in terms of like second screens, for instance. And I would just say, I, don't, I didn't expect Apple to come out with like a second display or anything, but it's intriguing. I think people are like, wow, that's really different. Maybe I need that. And Apple just didn't have that. We just had the touch bar. Well, here's the thing. The people that use the MacBook Pro, they're happy with this design. They can do what they need to really, really well with this design that Apple just gave us that's very similar to what we've seen for years. What would it do to have a second display down there? You end up with like your keyboard placed in a weird spot and your trackpad's like in a weird spot too. Um, does it really do anything for a pro? Or is it at this point still kind of more or less a bit of a gimmick? I don't know, but Apple's not gonna take some big chance on their pro lineup uh, with something like that. So. It may feel a little bit boring to you, but I think this is this is the rock solid necessary design that Apple's given us that we can do a lot with. It just works. Hopefully, keyboard. So the price of this guy starts at $23.99. You can get one fully loaded for $6,099. I just wanna point out one thing. When Apple announced the Mac Pro, which we now have an actual date for, you could get it by the end of the December. The Mac Pro, it's it was announced so long ago, by the time it actually hits the market, it's gonna be so outdated, kind of, uh, that it's not, the base configuration, which is very expensive in the $6,000 range, is gonna have half the RAM that you could get on this new MacBook Pro. Do you see where I'm going here? Like the price of this MacBook Pro, it is expensive. Uh, even for pros, it's expensive, um, but, it's actually a pretty decent mix of pricing to features compared to the Mac Pro anyways, which seems like it's sort of a mess when it comes to features and price for the base model in particular. Now, before we get into the Q&A, let me give a quick shout out to our sponsor today, Clean My Mac X. I've really come to appreciate having Clean My Mac X installed over the last year. And you can bet that I'm gonna have it installed on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. I love how it tells me things like battery draining apps and it lets me see at a glance how much memory is getting used on the system and it gives me the option to free up more with just one click. I'm also really appreciating the anti-malware feature, which is important as more and more Macs get sold and the Mac market becomes a bigger and more attractive target to bad actors. So whether it's malware, adware, or even ransomware, the database is regularly updated so the protection module always has your back. With a beautiful design and dozens of cleanup and tune-up tools in one convenient app, Clean My Mac X can help you delete system junk and hidden clutter, speed up your Mac. Now get this, it removes about 31 gigs of junk from the average Mac, so what are you waiting for? Give it a try using a link in the description. Question number one is, why do I think it's taken Apple so long to implement some customer feedback? That's an interesting question because on the one hand, Steve Jobs, it feels like, had a reputation of like, not asking the customer what they needed and instead executing something better than they could have imagined. It's like the old quote, like if people had asked Henry Ford uh, for something, they would have said, give me a faster horse, but instead he gave them a car. That's like how people thought of Steve Jobs, right? And then as we moved into the Tim Cook era and stuff, whether that was true or not, by the way, as we moved into the Tim Cook era, it feels like things maybe kind of went in a different direction and maybe that's mostly feeling, but I don't know the exact answer, but what I'll tell you is that a lot of people are gonna say it feels like Apple's sort of undoing a lot of what Johnny Ive was about. And instead they're doing like a better balance uh, now that he's gone, maybe, even though products are in the pipeline for several years, uh, of balancing how things work and how things look. And so I don't really know the answer, but I do know, I'm just excited that they do seem to be, they're, they're telling us, it doesn't seem to be, they're telling us they are listening, at least to their pro customers, 
and that's a good thing. I'm excited about it. Next question is what do I currently edit my videos on and will the 16 inch MacBook Pro that I'm gonna get uh, increase my workflow or how will it? The answer is I've been using a 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro, which was basically max all the way out in the specs department. And um, it's been working really well. You know, I, I say it's in the last year or so, it's started to kind of stutter a little bit as I've started to push the machine in ways that I didn't even think or know that I would back when I bought it. Isn't that how things always go? Um, but because I had kind of maxed it out, it has hang, hung in there, you know, for these three years or whatever. Um, and But it's definitely getting to the point. I think three years is about my max that I can go, at least doing what I'm doing before I need to upgrade. And so it's got to the point where if I'm editing something and it's really intensive in terms of like effects uh, or, you know, even stuff like stabilization, optical flow, it'll sit there and crunch through a lot of those operations for a good chunk of my day. And it ends up being time wasted for me. And yeah, I can work on other things while it's doing that. But if I'm able to uh, eradicate a lot of that time crunched, so to speak, then that gives me a lot of my day back and actually lets me get more done and it would increase my output. So I don't know how much of it, uh, a jump is gonna be from the 2016, sorry, did I say 15? 2016, 15 inch um, to this new model, the 16 inch, but I know that it's gonna be better than what I had. Um, and so the, the real net benefit is that hopefully I'll be able to get more done and have more, rec reclaim some of my time, whether it's personal time or just time in the business that I can then reinvest into something else. So it's gonna have a huge impact. So therefore, this is an expensive computer, but I do expect it to help me earn more revenue, more profit, and therefore it's worth it. And that's why for a professional, you know, uh, something like this is kind of a no brainer. Next question is, do I like this new Magic Keyboard or the old Butterfly Keyboard better? Disclaimer, I haven't yet tested it. I'm just in the process of like figuring out the specs, talking with the Apple Store business department, figuring out what I wanna order and whatever. Um, obviously there'll be lots of videos coming up about all this, uh, but I will say, I know that I'm gonna like this. I'm, I'm like 100% sure based on the early feedback because it basically combines the best of both worlds. Not everything about the old keyboard was bad. There was bad stuff about it, but not all of it was bad. So those good things are now getting married to the stuff that we all like from the other keyboard design and some new tweaks getting mashed together. And I think that this should be absolutely stellar. So I'm pretty confident, 99.9999% sure that I can tell you I'm going to like this new one better. More key travel, more feedback, more spaced out keys, an escape key, the arrow keys. When you add it all up, it's like some little things and some more major things, but they're gonna combine into something really awesome. I feel it. Let me say this, the Magic Keyboard in general, um, not the one on this laptop, but just the Magic Keyboard, it's not actually my favorite keyboard out there to use um, for a few reasons. It's great, like it's really good. I do like it, um, but something like the Logitech MX keyboard, which is like the pro, one of the pro Logitech keyboards, I really like the way that thing handles. Um, so there's always room for improvement, right? Next question is, would I say the microphone and the speakers are good enough to use without any accessories? From what I've heard, I would say yes. Now it's gonna depend on where you're at, what your work is and where you're at in your career, right? Um, if you're like super ultra mega music producer, then you're probably gonna wanna use some accessories uh, because you're gonna want the absolute highest quality stuff that you can get. Even with podcasting, you know, like the mic is everything and even just 10% improvement, it might be everything in your business. Um, but if you're like a student and you're starting your business and you're trying to get out there and you just can or want to use just this one laptop, you know what? From what I've heard, I think this would be excellent for you. And I do think that you could get away with just this with no other accessories. Is the new one millimeter key travel on the new Magic Keyboard better in comparison to the old butterfly switches. Can you notice a difference? Well, let's put it this way. When we're talking about millimeters, that's not a whole lot of space, right? But in the old design, it was half the key travel of this new one millimeter. So from what I've heard from early impressions and just logically 50% better is better. So I do expect it to actually be noticeable. If you want a better answer, stay tuned for my review. Somebody says, will I end up selling my old MacBook Pro? 
not because they want to buy it, they're just curious. But yeah, as a tech person, it's nice to have old stuff around so that you can compare it visually in videos, show people like differences and stuff. That always makes it more of an impact uh, for a visual medium like this, like YouTube. But also, um, I like to keep old stuff like that just because it has personal information on it. And no matter how you get rid of it, you're always like, did it actually get erased? Is it actually in safe hands? You know, there's that aspect. And I'm not super worried about that or anything, but it's just nice for peace of mind. And also, it's not worth it for me to sell it, really, for what I'm gonna end up getting versus the value I'll have by retaining it and being able to show it in like five years or six years when we have a totally different design or something. All right, so that's it for this video. If you have other questions, ask them down in the comments. Check out the description. There's all kinds of fun stuff for you to explore there, I promise. And you know what? If you're not following me on Instagram or Twitter, I'm at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K, -K, in both of those places. Now's a great time to do it. If you're not a member of the podcast family, you have to jump on there. I don't know what's wrong with you, what universe you've been living in. Uh, we got lots of great reviews over on Apple Podcasts, and we'd love to have some more. So if you like it, uh, make sure to leave a review. But the links for that is down in the description as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.